my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I'm wearing one of my fancy booktube hats, and today I'm bringing you the second installment of my new anthology reading wrap-up series where I talk about five stories at a time in whatever anthology, uh, multi-author anthology, I'm currently reading. If you want a further explanation about what this is and why I'm doing it, I will link you to my prior video. Um, but this is the second video where I'm going to be talking about stories from this book, which has an interlibrary loan cover on it, but it is The Green Man Tales from the Mythic Forest, edited by Ellen Datlow and Terry Windling. Now, I had hoped to actually finish this book before it was due back at the library and I had to return it. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. It's due back today. I'm gonna go return it as soon as I finish filming this video, and I'm not gonna finish it. <laughs> to clarify, I will finish this book eventually. I will get my hands on another copy of it, either by doing interlibrary loan again or getting my hands on a physical copy some other way, or by getting uh, myself a copy of the ebook. The ebook edition was only recently released, um, and the print edition is out of print. But part of what is sort of a weight off my shoulders in doing anthology wrap-ups like this, chunks of stories at a time instead of whole books, is that it is fine if I return this unfinished and don't come back to it in the near future. I do plan on finishing reading this book eventually, but uh, in terms of anthology wrap-ups, I may be moving on to another anthology for my next installment of this series. Now, one of the things that I realized about this anthology between uh, the last wrap-up of stories and this one is that they tend to skew kind of YA. And I realized that this is probably because this book is published by, or was published, by Firebird Fantasy, which is an imprint which no longer exists but I believe it was technically a YA imprint that published a lot of what I think of as classic fantasy authors, but titles ostensibly for a YA readership. And it strikes me as odd within this particular book, because as I talked about in my last video, um, the introduction talking about the folklore history of different mythic figures associated with the mythic primal wood, and setting out the purpose of this anthology basically was very academic. Um, it did not seem like an introduction of a YA anthology. It seemed like it was talking to adult readers interested in that subject matter. And the author's notes at the ends of all the stories are all in line with that as well. They all talk about what the folkloric inspiration is for whatever type of nature spirit or forest god they've decided to depict in their stories, um, and it doesn't feel like they're specifically talking to teenage readers about what they want to, to say to young people. So the packaging of the anthology feels very adult, but then a huge percentage of the stories are like contemporary teenagers having teenager problems and then, like, forest magic happens. And the ones that aren't contemporary, that are, like, more fairy tale-ish, have, um, you know, sort of young fairy tale maidens or whatever as main characters, so not incompatible with a teenage expected readership. Also, the previous Ellen Datlow and Terry Windling anthology that I had read, which was Snow White, Blood Red, the first in that anthology series, um, this feels very different to me than that because the point of that anthology series is explicitly to show how adult fairy tales can be, um, and so there's a lot of um, very graphic or disturbing content in those stories, and that's missing here, which Honestly, I personally like um, it felt gratuitous um, and sort of like it was there for shock value to an extent um, in Snow White Blood Red for me. But to me so far this feels like the editors wanted to do an adult anthology but there was some restriction on the content by the publisher. I don't know if that was true or not. Um, that, that causes all of the stories to skew kind of YA. But moving on to the actual five stories, or rather four stories and one poem, the first in this batch is again a poem, as the first and the last batch was. 
This is called Song of the Calic Beer by Jane Yolen. I am not sure on that pronunciation. I tried to look it up with not much success, but she describes it in the author's notes as a Scottish wood fairy associated with winter. From the little bit of research I did trying to get a pronunciation, this one seems to be significantly more of a stretch. Um, for inclusion in a Green Man themed anthology than some of the others in the collection. The anthology does take the idea of magical forest figures pretty broadly, but this does seem to be stretching it a little further than most. Um, but I did really like this poem. It is short and it uh, feels like a song, as the title suggests. It has like sort of verse and chorus structure. It's written a little bit in dialect, so it feels like it could be an old ballad or something. I do think I really like Jane Yolen's poetry. Next is Hunter's Moon by Patricia A. McKillop, who is one of my very favorite authors, so I actually had very high hopes for this story. However, I think this is one of my least favorite things of her I've read. I didn't dislike it, I was just expecting more. It is, of everything I've read of hers, the most grounded in contemporary reality. Um, this is one of those, you know, contemporary teenager stories where some magic happens in the woods. It's about a teenage girl. She and her little brother, and I think also her father, are um, visiting her uncle's, like, hunting cabin in the woods because her uncle likes to hunt. And she and her brother get lost in the woods and meet a mysterious young man, um, and there's something maybe a little magical about him. This just felt really, really short. It felt like it was cut off before what I expected to be the main meat of the story um, actually happened. The magic in this is just hinted at, like right at the end, and I was expecting it to go way further. Next is Charlie's Away by Midori Snyder, who's an author I've heard of but never read before. This was another contemporary teenager with teenage problems whom uh, forest magic happened to. It's about a boy named Charlie who is a, like a senior in high school. He's just applied to college and he's gotten accepted to like his top choice school, um, which will take him away from home. But he has these deep reservations about leaving his parents because he's filled with all sorts of guilt about the death of his younger sister, which happened like 10 years prior. And he feels both sort of like responsible for his sister's death and also like responsible for keeping his parents together in the wake of it. Like he feels like they'll fall apart without him if he leaves home. And in this story he gets like drawn into a magical greenwood up in the branches of the trees, and the magic people he meets there like help him shed those burdens or whatever. This one was probably my least favorite of the batch. I thought about it for a while to figure out what felt off about it to me, and I think the problem for me was that for me this would have actually worked better as the sort of story where the magic was ambiguous if you were meant to ask whether it was real or not, um, because it's one of those stories where the magic comes and like fixes the problem in a way that feels like cheating for the character's emotional growth. Like he eventually learns that his sister was magical and like not actually dead. She like had to return to her people in the trees and his parents knew this all along and like, okay, um, this could have been a very interesting story about grief and you know, moving on as a family, but those problems were solved too easily by just, hey, magic family history, you can go to college now. This one, I should note, is apparently inspired by an Irish epic that I've never heard of called Sweeney in the Trees, except it uh, supposedly takes a much less tragic and more positive spin on the theme. Next is A World Painted by Birds by Catherine Vaz. This one is, I think, inspired by some Portuguese folklore, and this is one of the ones that is not a contemporary teen story. This is told in a very, like, heightened, kind of surreal literary style. There's some very beautiful imagery in it, but also some, like, 
extremely weird moments. It's basically about a place that is uh, governed by a tyrannical unnamed general where nice and beautiful things are outlawed and so people are disappeared away to a prisoner camp and uh, what's left is sort of colorless and lifeless life in this place. And it's about two lovers who run away into the forest where um, a gardener has escaped to and is like growing a more beautiful world. I feel like a straightforward description of the plot of this story gives no sense of the actual feel of it at all. But it's basically about revolution through art and beauty, and it was stylistically a sort of breath of fresh air from all of the more contemporary realistic stories. But my favorite in this batch of five was I think Grounded by Nina Kariki Hoffman, who's an author I uh, had never read before, but I, I could be persuaded to seek out more of her work based on this story. It was another contemporary teen story, but I really liked it. It's about a girl whose mother has developed a long-distance relationship with um, a man in California whom she's never met face to face, and so they, mother and daughter, travel out to meet him and his family. And he's the sort of magical green man figure in this story, and it was just a very warm and cozy story full of nice things that turn out nice. Like, the main character is obviously so deeply worried about all of the ways this could go so badly, and for the most part it doesn't, and things are nice, and the house out in the woods is beautiful and magical, and the people are understanding, and there's music because she plays piano, and she's like writing music about her feelings, and it ends up being sort of about the cycles of life and growth and death and how harmonious it is and it was just a very uplifting and heartwarming story. So those were the five stories I'm going to talk about today. I did forget to check before I sat down to film whether any of these stories um, have been reprinted anywhere that you might find them aside from this anthology. I will look that up before I post the video and put links in the comments. Let me know if you've read any of these stories or if you've read anything else by these authors. Specifically, I would like to know if anyone's read anything by Nina Kariki Hoffman and if there's anything of hers I should particularly keep my eye out for. Anyhow, I hope you're having a nice day. That is all. Bye for now. <laughs>